Elizabeth, welcome to Waterstones, first of all. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. It's great to have you here. And I think it's great to have Olive back in our lives again. I think anyone who's read Olive Kitteridge will know her voice and her character and her mannerisms. And I wondered first, when was it you started to hear that voice again demanding to be right? About? Well, I had never expected to hear it again. I had never expected for her to reappear in my life. But um, I don't know, probably four years ago, I just can't really remember exactly, but I was sitting in a cafe in Norway and I was just checking my emails and she just showed up. She just showed up again and I saw her nosing her car into the marina and getting out of the car, only this time she had a cane mm -hmm. and I realized, okay, she's older, and she, but she was still so olive and so I realized I had to get it down right away because she's olive, yeah. you know, and attention must be paid when Olive shows up. So I did. So I, so I wrote it down quickly. And within a few days, I had sketched out that particular chapter mm. called The Poet. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, uh, we're back. There's more. She's back. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about actually the form of the books, because they are, those yeah. chapters are yeah. almost sort of separate Yeah, they're stories. separate stories, right. Why was it that that was the form that the story took? Right, because in the original Olive Kittredge, I had written, I wrote one story, the story at her son's wedding. That was the first story I wrote in that. And then I realized, I'm, I thought, oh, I'm going to write a book called Olive Stories. But then as I was putting it together, I realized, you know, she's an awful lot to take on every page. If, if, I, if I was a reader, I wouldn't want to see Olive on every single page. And then I realized um, that, you know, I'm always interested in how people think they know somebody, but they really only know a certain part of them. And then somebody else knows a different part of them. Mm -hmm. And so that, that got me interested in seeing Olive from different people's points of view in town. And then they became characters in and of themselves. And so that's how I wrote that. And then when I returned to Olive, because she's episodic. Yeah. You know, it's like that's what comes through my mind is that she's episodic and therefore she can only have a certain amount of stage time because she's a lot. And it does allow you to, I suppose, to shine a light or to put the focus on different people from the same community. Exactly. And the community the itself almost becomes a character. Yeah. When I sit down to write, I'm always thinking about the character. Yeah. I'm always concerned with the character first and foremost. But because people live in a place and time in history, then their place becomes apparent to me right away. Like when I saw Olive, I could see the trees. I mean, I, you know, she was already in her place. Yeah. And so the, the place and the landscape become apparent rather quickly. But I do start always with a character. What's really interesting with Olive as a character is in Olive again, a few other characters sort of begrudgingly, I suppose, admit that they always kind of liked her. You know, they, they say, well, I've always yeah, thought yeah. she's okay. Right. Because she's seen as this sort of cantankerous That's old woman. Right. But actually, they do like her. And I right. wondered why it was you thought that other people do actually like her, despite the fact that she can be very, very difficult. Right. Well, you know, it's funny because you only catch little glimpses of people saying, well, I always liked her. She may not be every, every, you know, everybody's cup of tea, but I always liked her. And so the person saying that is somebody that I recognize who will appreciate Olive's qualities. Mm as opposed to having been the brunt of her qualities, you know. And you mentioned that when these news stories came to you, that you, you saw immediately that she was older. And this idea of aging yeah. is so important in the book. And also, I suppose, tied with it, this idea of loneliness. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, you know, she, she starts off lonely because she's lost her husband, Henry, and then she gets uh, married to Jack Hennison, which is, like, so bizarre in a way. But as I was writing about Jack, and all of I realized they actually made a certain kind of sense. Mm. They made perfect sense in a certain kind of way because they were both able to be themselves with each other. And so, and then she loses Jack. Mm. And then she begins to be, have a different level of loneliness after that. And then at the end, she's not as lonely because she's found a friend. But I think that there are many people in, well, in the world, but in the kind, in, my country and mm. I'm sure yours as well, who mm. do end up living alone and find the days longer than they used to find them. Yeah. There's an interesting conversation she has with a, a Somali nurse. Right. Where That's there's right. a difference in culture yeah. where she talks of the Somali nurse is talking about how families stay together. That's right. Whereas in Western societies, as Olive says, you know, my son gets married, and he leaves home and that's it. You know? That's right. It's a interesting and that was true. I mean, when I wrote that, I realized oh, that's actually true. Yeah. The thing also that struck me as well was there's something about um, 
writing older women. So again, when I was filming with another author, Bernadine Evaristo, who was one of the joint winners of the Booker Prize this year, yeah. and she said that the book, Girl, Woman, Other, that she had written, she could only have written now that she was older right. because she wanted to write about older women. And she said, when you're young, authors tend to write old women as kind of mad old bags, and that's all they right. are. And she needed more time to right. sort of think about what it is to be an older woman. Right. And you, of course, were published when you were in your 40s and you right. writing. I just wondered whether you right. felt that that maturity yeah. has helped you to write these books. Absolutely it has because, you know, I've gotten older. <laughs> and so Olive gets older. I mean, she's older than I am, obviously. But, yeah. but my understanding of the world and just watching because I'm always watching and observing people all the time. Mm. And, um, and there are plenty of people, particularly in Maine, as I said, anywhere. But, you know, in New York, they're harder to watch in their homes you know because they're they're on the sidewalk and you can tell oh that person is struggling because they're older or something like that but in in Maine I have been able to observe and watch and seen people who are going through this kind of tra these kinds of transitions allied to this idea I suppose of wisdom that comes with age is also that capacity to be surprised Olive is still constantly exactly. discovering things about exactly and that's I think right. That's quite an interesting thing through, throughout the book, actually, with people being surprised about what they discover about even their own family and exactly. their close friends. Right, right, right. And she's, she, you know, Olive continues to grow in this book um, to, to a real extent, actually, like when the home health care workers come over mm. and the smiley worker comes and then the other woman comes with the, you know, the bumper sticker, that awful orange haired man yeah. that Olive, you know, would rather die than be seen with that bumper sticker, but um, but that, but Betty, who has the bumper sticker, it, it was very interesting for me as I wrote that story to realize how that story was gonna turn out because Olive actually, she's upset with Betty, but then she realizes, well, Betty has her life. Mm. So tell me about your life, mm. Betty. And I thought, oh, look at you, Olive. You're actually, you know, really asking somebody to tell them about their lives and Betty just says oh it's just a life and she said well it's your life I'd like to know mm. and and then so that was an interesting story for me and I realized that Olive is growing she's continuing to grow and she's able to at that point in her life actually be curious yeah I mean I think she's always been curious but you know she's got the wherewithal now to act on it so there's a difference between the, the curiosity of, of observing somebody and then actually engaging yeah, them in conversation exactly right and saying tell me and then the last line of that story i thought oh, oh now it works as a story